everybody and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. If you're returning, thank you so much as always for being here. Today's video is a compilation of the best patriotic DIYs I have to share. So let's go ahead and get right on into the crafting. DIY number one. So for this project, I have three little circles that I've gotten from a value pack of um, wood pieces from the Dollar Tree. And then I showed you two larger circles that came from, I believe it was a pack of eight circles that I had left over from other projects. I have all of those fun uh, paper straws from the Dollar Tree that are patriotic for the United States. And then I was showing you my star bond glue that I'm using with the accelerator. Now this accelerator, I'm telling you, it sticks immediately. I hadn't quite lined up those first two circles completely. And when I stuck them together, there was just no, no moving them. <laughs> so it was okay because these aren't going to see, uh, these aren't going to see, these will not be seen. They will be hidden. Um, so it was, it was good enough for my purposes. So now I am taking my two larger circles. I'm giving one side a quick coat of my Adirondack white chalk paint. And you're not gonna see the underside, which is why I only did one side of it. Um, I know you all, if you've watched me for any length of time, know that I like to have all of my sides of my projects completely finished. So not to worry, um, the unpainted side will not be seen. So I've got my little joy out once more. I'm gonna do a very simple design. So it's not even really a design, I'm cutting out USA. So I'm just going through the app, I'm picking out a font that I want, I'm typing in USA, and then I am going to use my fingers to just make it the size that I want it. And once I have it where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and get it cut out on my little machine. So you can see there USA, I'm just checking and making sure that it's what I want. And then I'm gonna send it to cut. So opening up my little joy. I do have this on the mat again, only because I'm using a scrap piece. And went ahead and hit send. After it loaded, it's cutting it out. And then it tells me it's done. I hit unload and it's done, right? So I am putting my little protective sheet back on there. If you haven't worked with a vinyl cutter before, the mats are sticky to hold and grip the vinyl when it's going through the machine. So I always like to just put my protector back over top of it so that it doesn't get you know, dust and hair and, and Sammy fur <laughs> on it. So I like to keep it clean. So I have my little white rounds that are dry now and I'm prepping my letters. And once I get that off, just using my little burnishing tool to help me with that, I'm going to apply it to the center of one of my white painted circles. So just gonna burnish that. And again, you can hand letter this, you could stencil this. You know, there are a lot of different ways you could do this. You do not have to have a vinyl cutter to, to make this project, okay? So now I am going to take one of my rounds and I have a piece of parchment paper and I am just going to trace the round on here and I'm cutting it out. I'm making a little template basically a little pattern and then I'm going to fold it in half a few different times and the reason I'm doing this is I'm looking for center and this is the easiest way for me personally to find the middle of a project so I am just folding it a bunch of times until I am certain that they're all intersecting in the middle and then I'm going to fold it all over on itself along those creases snip a teeny tiny little hole at the point and then I'm going to mark the center on my wood round. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the little one. I'm just using the the larger cutout that I already have and I just traced my small circle, did the same thing, folding it, folding it, finding center. I'm just going to mark that one. I'm lining that up with the mark on my wood because I'm using parchment paper so I can see through it, right? So I know you can't really see here in the video but i was able to line up my two little markings so i know that i have my circle in the center here i started to trace it parchment paper is a little challenging to trace because it kept wanting to lift so i am just using the edge of my pencil and kind of scribbling around it so i can see 
where I'm going to want to set my circle down. And I'm not worried about this being messy because again, this is not going to be showing. So using some of my glue, using my accelerator and putting that down and then it is bonded. So now I'm taking my patriotic straws and I was trying to decide how many of these I was going to need. Um, there were eight of the blue and then eight of the red and white stripes. And I decided I only needed four of the blue because I'm going to be cutting them in half. So here I am trying to find center and I ended up giving up because it wasn't like an even number and math just wasn't working for me that night. So I did it by um, eye and uh, you know, would you believe that I actually cut it right in the middle? I could not do that again if you paid me, but I just used that first one that I cut and used that as my little measure to cut down the rest of them. And hopefully you're starting to get an idea of what I'm doing here. I'm going to be making a little flag starburst sort of thing. I guess that's what you would call this is like a starburst. But the straws were rolling around on me a little bit. So I decided to start squeezing the little ends. So I just kind of smooshed the end that I knew was going to get glued down um, to help prevent it from rolling a little bit. And so maybe like a quarter to a half an inch at the bottom, I did that. And then I went ahead and cut down all eight of my red and white striped straws and just did the same thing. I had used one of my blue ones to measure it and then I just cut them all down in half. And then I went ahead and I squooshed the little ends of all of my red and white striped straws too. So once I had them all lined up where I wanted them, I just made sure that they were spaced around there and all butting up to that center circle. And then I used a whole bunch of hot glue and I was very generous with this. And I just, I let it kind of ooze in between all the straws so that I made sure that it was getting down into the wood on the base so that they would be nice and secure. And then I put a whole bunch of glue in the middle and took my other circle and set it right on top made sure it was lined up and i pressed down so that all of the straws would lift up off the table because they were all kind of like slanted a little bit and now they are evenly between the two rounds i think this is so sweet let me know what you think diy number two for this project, I am using one of these little crates from the Dollar Tree, giving it a good coat of the white Adirondack chalk paint all over. And then I am coming in with these words that I'd created with my Silhouette Cameo and applying them to the box. Now you do not need to have a vinyl cutter to be able to do this. You can hand write it, you can do other things. I'm realizing right now that I had intended to use a stencil for this bottom part. So I had gone ahead and done the opposite of what I had created for that last one. Um, but you can use stencils, you can pencil it in and then go over it with, with paint, whatever is going to make it easiest for you. There are a lot of options here. It does not have to be um, used with a vinyl cutter. So I've got bold stripes, bright stars, brave hearts. I saw this on Pinterest and I thought it was awesome. And so I decided I wanted to do something similar and I haven't had a chance to do one of these faux book stacks um, and I've been wanting to do it. So as you saw, I was using my little cosmetic sponge on the stencil part with the ocean by Waverly and while I have my ocean open I'm going ahead and I am also painting that top strip across the uh, across the top <laughs> so I'm just making sure that I am being real careful not to get it on the sides or on the top of my box here but while I have it out, I do flip the box upright or upside down, depending on how you want to look at it, because I am using this little crate upside down. And I am creating a blue rectangle at the top left corner of the project. So going to get that all filled in. As you can see, I am just um, doing this by hand. I am not taping anything off. I was fine with that because I really know that I'm going to be planning on distressing it a little bit later. And so I'm just, I'm being careful, but I'm understanding that in 
places, it's not going to be perfect, and I'm really okay with that. So now you saw I'm, I came in with my crimson to do that center little panel, and now I'm trying to figure out how many stripes I can fit in here with the width of the paintbrush that I'm using. Now, I know that I am not going to have the proper number of stripes, so hopefully you won't hold that against me. This is um, really a representation. It's not meant to be completely accurate, so um, just uh, I hope you'll forgive that. So I am coming in and doing all of the stripes again. Again, just doing it by hand without the taping off, but I was fine with that. Now, while I didn't have enough stripes, I somehow decided that we needed a few extra states. So I've got too few stripes and too many stars. I think I ended up with something like 56 stars, but <sighs> the life of a crafter, right? Um, so just taking all of the vinyl away from the project now, and you can see all of the words coming to life, and I just think it looks so pretty. I'm loving this. And then I'm going to come in with my little sanding block and give it a good distressing, which actually did not take long at all. It was relatively easy. So distress that up. And there you have it. And now I'm going to come in with my Dollar Tree uh, Baker's Twine. And I am going to use two lengths of this and wrap it around the box and just do a simple shoelace bow. And I haven't mentioned, but our challenge for this hop is to use $10 tree items and create as many projects with them as we can. And we're supposed to use multiple Dollar Tree items per project. And I'm sorry if you hear Sammy. He has decided to climb on me right now. <laughs> so, but let me know what you think of this. DIY number three. So I have red, white, and blue ribbon, a basket from the Dollar Tree, and then a piece of cardboard that I'm showing you here was about eight inches long, and then I think it was five inches wide, but that doesn't really matter, just so long as you've got the length that you need. Now, if I had to do this over again, I would have probably made my card 10 inches instead of 8 inches because I found that my ribbon lengths, at least for what I initially wanted to do, were not quite long enough. I hadn't accounted for enough ribbon for the knots that I was going to be making. They just, they took up more ribbon than I had anticipated they would. So word to the wise, you might want to make them a little bit longer depending on how you want to do this. If you like the way I end up doing it, then you're good. But I went ahead and dovetailed all of my ribbons. I had, I believe, 25 lengths of the blue and then I think it was 30 white and 30 red. I think that is what I ended up with. But I'm just coming in and as you can see, I wanted to do this on the inside of the basket and then I was expecting it to all... Um, come higher than the rim of the basket and it, that just didn't happen. Um, it might have been cute having it contained within the rim of the basket and then it might have looked like it just had a gold frame around it. I'm not sure because I didn't end up doing it that way. I decided to flip it upside down and as you can see I am now tying everything to the outside bottom of the basket and it's just a simple knot and I'm just knotting them at each intersection wherever the basket wires join. So I am coming through obviously with my blue and then I'm going to do five red. So there are 10 rows or 10 columns, if you will. And then there are seven, I believe it was rows. So a total of 70 little intersections here. So my first row was five blue, five red. Now I did five blue and I'm coming in with five white across there. And then in a moment, I'm also going to be adding a few um, little white ribbons in between some of my blues. So when I went in and added those in, I did not do it on the cross sections. I just did it on the straight edges of the basket. Hopefully that makes sense. So that little section is a little bit more full or fuller than the rest of the, the wreath that we're creating. Um, you could certainly go in and add more ribbon. I was limited because I didn't have a lot of leftover ribbon. And I also thought that inside part looked cool too. So if you like that better, you might want to make that the outside, but then you just have to reverse the pattern that you're doing.
hopefully that's making sense. So then I decided I wanted to just trim out the exterior of the basket. And so I'm using red where the red borders, and then I'm gonna come in with some white where there is white on the edges. Um, so I kind of alternated the white and the red along the side where we have the stripes. And then the blue is bordering where the blue edges up on the wreath. So this is something I've never done before. Hopefully you guys like it. Um, I just came in with some hot glue on the inside to make sure that all of the ribbon was secure for those borders. And yeah, something different. It's definitely abstract. It's, uh, hopefully you can kind of tell that it's supposed to be a flag, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. DIY number four. For this project, I am starting out with some, uh, I guess you would call that vase filler from Hobby Lobby. I have it in my stash for a while. I have a couple of really thin vases that I also had in my stash. My sister had given them to me a while back. I have what was a candle, <laughs> so the glass candle holder is all that remains, and I have three of these awesome trays from the Dollar Tree. So I am just filling my little glass what used to be the candle holder um, with some of the vase filler and just getting that nice and full and then I'm going to be putting one of the trays right down on top of it just going to use some hot glue for this putting that around the edge my thought here is that this is not going to be a permanent bond so I can easily take it apart later to put different things in here for different holidays so hopefully you're getting what I'm doing here so I also have this fun I don't know what you would even call this, a faux sparkler maybe? I don't know, but it's celebratory and I just thought it would be so fun to put down inside of this little um, uh, bud vase, right? That I'm gonna be using as the riser for my next layer of my tray. Now I did intend for this to be a three tiered tray and then I ended up cracking one of the bud vases that you're gonna see here in a second. <laughs> And so I was trying to put that little wire across the top and that's where I broke it, right? I hadn't trimmed it down quite enough and I forced it and so now it's gonna be a two-tier tray instead. But the reason I was doing that, the little sparkler, for lack of a better term, that I'm placing down in here, over time I didn't want it to sag and end up kind of drooping in the bottom. So I wanted something across the top that would support it. So I glued the little tip of it to the stem that I'd cut off and then I anchored that stem at the top of the bud vase. Hopefully that's making sense. So you can see it's kind of like a little T at the top there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and secure my bud, bud vase to the tray and then I'm also going to do the same Sorry, I'm out of frame here. It's this new camera angle that I've been working with, but I added some more hot glue around the edge of that and I'm putting that down. I did it upside down this time to make sure that I was gonna be able to see where the center was. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna flip this back right side up and now you can see my cute little two-tiered tray. Let me know what you think. DIY number five. So for this project, I am starting out with these little wooden cubes that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I realized while I was measuring it that I actually said on there what it was supposed to be. It's two and a quarter inches. I actually end up using a different block that's a little bit smaller later. But I am so excited, you guys. I have received a Cricut Joy from Cricut. And I have been wanting one of these machines for so long because I had heard that they are fantastic for quick and easy little projects. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. This was a joy to work with. 
see what I did there? <laughs> but I downloaded the app onto my phone. It took me 30 seconds to get myself set up on the app. It took about 30 seconds to set up the machine. It is Wi-Fi enabled. So all you have to do is plug it in and it hooks up to your phone and you're good to go. The um, app is super easy to use. Now you saw that I was using that first sheet of vinyl. It's called Smart Vinyl. So the Joy uses smart materials, meaning that they don't require a mat. Now you see that I am using the little mat that came with it because you do have that option for this next little cut job that I'm doing because I'm kind of of the thought of waste not want not and I trimmed down my first project and I had this extra vinyl and I wanted to use the extra vinyl and you need to have a certain amount I think in order for it to run through the machine properly and this odd shape was not going to do it so I added it I put it on the mat, little mat and I designed it with the grids in mind because in the app itself you see all those little grids also so you can figure out exactly where you want your design to be cut hopefully that's making sense so I did that and you just hit like unload it unloads it and this is so super easy I went ahead and cut out another word in red and then once I had all of those um, cut um, I think I actually did do one in silver as well and that I'm going to show you so Again, I'm going to use the little mat. For the red, I didn't use the mat. Now I'm back to using the mat because I cut out that teeny little piece of <laughs> vinyl that I had from a scrap from setting up the machine and cutting out my little ampersand that I wanted to use for my project. So once I had everything cut, I went ahead and weeded everything. I'm not going to put you through watching me weed everything because I'm sure you've seen a lot of people weed um, their projects. And here with the white vinyl, you can't even see what I'm doing. So I don't know. There's something a little bit satisfying about it. But once I had that set, here I'm showing you the wood pile. And I decided to go with these because once I had my words cut out, I decided I wanted them to fill up the space a little bit more than they were going to do on those other blocks. Showing you all my paint colors. It was the Imperial Red by Home Decor, the Ocean by Waverly, and the Adirondack White also by Home Decor. They're all plaid products. Love plaid. You know, it's it's funny, over time I've learned that most of what I use is plaid and half the time I didn't even realize that that was what I was using. But the um, first block I did entirely blue. The second block I started with two blue panels opposite each other. And now on the third block, while those are drying, I'm coming in and doing white on two panels opposite each other. Now I'm going back to block number two and I'm adding in two more panels of white opposite from each other. So on block number two, I'm going to have two white, two blue, and two red panels. And they're all going to be opposite each other. So the colors are nice and mixed. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here because now I'm coming in with the red. Now I didn't bother to tape any of these off. I figured it was going to be just fine doing it this way. Um, I was just real careful at the edges to sweep my brush off the edge as opposed to letting it wrap down around the, the side of the, the cube. Hopefully you're understanding what I mean. But um, I managed to get really nice crisp edges, so I was very happy with it. So with block number three now, the white is dry on those two panels. And then I'm just going to paint the remaining four panels with the red. So... Hopefully you're seeing my patriotic theme that's going on here. So now I am going to go ahead and prep all of the words that I had weeded using my Cricut transfer tape. I'm just going to um, burnish it and then peel away the backing. And once I have that ready to go, and I had this really long piece of transfer tape. I don't know why I didn't cut it down, but that's why you see the paper on it. Normally I just remove the paper entirely, but I realized I really didn't need the entire length that I was working with so but uh, as you can see again I'm just using the same transfer tape over and over because you don't it's not a one and done right so that's what I love about some of these products is that you can go ahead and use them multiple times I don't know why I was struggling with this one but try to get that backing off but went ahead and got it on the transfer tape applied it 
burnished it, and then just peeled away the transfer tape. Really easy. Now, if you do not have a vinyl cutter, do not fret because you can hand letter these. You could print something off of your printer and use graphite paper and trace them on that way. Um, there are a lot of different ways that you can do things like this. You could use a stencil. It doesn't have to be a vinyl cutter. Um, but if you have a vinyl cutter and you want to use that, you know, all the power to you. Now, of course, I got my stars and stripes on here and realized that I put my Empress and on the white, and I really wanted to put it on the red so I would have one red, one white, and one blue block showing. So I'm very carefully using my little spatula that Cricut sent with um, the package that they had sent to me. And I managed to get it off. I did end up putting it back on the transfer tape. And I'm trying to be real careful not to put my fingers all over the adhesive because I don't want to um, make it not sticky anymore with the oils from my fingers. So I managed to get it reshaped on the transfer tape and got it applied to the red block. So there we go. And yeah, I think it looks super, super cute. And so these are little stackable blocks with our red, white, and blue. And then the other little thing that I had cut out with that extra vinyl before, I had just made a bunch of little stars. And it was simply a matter of selecting a shape in the Cricut app. They have all kinds of shapes, all kinds of designs that are all set and ready. You just select it you know make it whatever size with your fingers that you want it to be using the grid on the app and then you send it to to cut it's so super easy i just i i am in love with the joy just absolutely love it so super easy to use super quick and you can take it anywhere because it's so compact i just i love it i can't say enough good things about it you guys so here is my little stars and stripes. Let me know what you think of this one. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're enjoying the projects so far. I really do appreciate every single one of you. If you have not already subscribed, if you don't know who I am, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. I am thrilled to have the opportunity to share all kinds of DIYs with you all, crafts usually on a budget, lots of Dollar Tree, trash to treasure, thrift flips, things of that sort. So a little bit of everything. And I hope that you will subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. My subscribers mean the world to me. You all are so super special and I appreciate you so much. So without further ado, let's get right back to the projects. DIY number six. So for this project, I have a Dollar Tree little metal pail, and then I have some Dollar Tree stars left over from Christmas. They came in something like an eight pack. I'm giving them a coat of the um, home decor chalk paint and Adirondack white. I was kicking myself later because I knew I wanted to distress them, and I used too much paint. So do yourself a favor. Don't go overboard with the paint if you're planning on distressing something. <laughs> so, now, I saw this trick in somebody else's video, and for the life of me, I cannot remember who did this so please forgive me if it was you and you are watching but I thought it was such a neat trick to set something underneath your pen and then move your project so that you could get a good line on it um, such a good idea so thank you to my fellow crafter I think it was someone who participated in the minis playlist challenge um, and that's probably why I'm not remembering who it was because there were a wonderful um, list of something like 20 different crafters who participated in that. And so I watched 20 videos in a very short period of time and I just, yeah. As Wendy from White Sparrow Living would say, the only thing I retain anymore is water. So <laughs> forgive me, but it was an awesome idea. And if you haven't seen that playlist, you might want to go and check it out because there was a lot of great inspiration. 
But I am now, I was using my Arteza um, paint marker, my acrylic paint marker, and I found it to be too sheer, and I was afraid that even going over it a second time, it wasn't going to have enough coverage. So I grabbed one of my reds that I thought would be a good color just by looking at the outside of the, the bottle. I forget what this one is called, but this is one of my folk art um, ac acrylic paints. And... Uh, I'm putting it on and I'm like, you know what? It looks too purple. Not that it's purple, but it's got too much pink in it. It's um, it's a purpley red. And so I decided ultimately to go back over it with flag red. I don't know why I didn't grab my apple barrel flag red in the first place, but now I am giving it a third coat with the flag red and it actually turned out really sweet. And I like that there's a little bit of variation in the color throughout. Um, yeah, it actually it looks really kind of cool. So coming in now with my pool noodle from the Dollar Tree and cutting down a few pieces to... Um, snug in here securely and just kind of pushing it down in and making sure that it's all a nice fit and it was tight enough that I did not need to worry about hot glue. So these are also on the Dollar Tree, these little blue mums. They made me think of fireworks. I saw them when I was getting ready to, to check out and I had to go over and grab some because I thought that they were super sweet and perfect for a 4th of July project. So I am tucking those all in and just getting them arranged the way that I want them. And then I went and took forever and a day to distress my stars. I will not put you through all of that. And then once they were distressed, I added them to some skewers with some hot glue so that I would be able to add them to my arrangement. And so when I first started putting them in here, I determined that they were a little bit too long. And so I went ahead and, and cut them down and then I was able to stick them back in again. And I'm sorry if I'm a little out of frame. This new angle shot, um, while I think it gives you a better view of some of what I'm doing, it, um, it doesn't allow for taller projects. So I don't know. Jury's out on this camera angle, but let me know what you think. And here is my arrangement all done. I think it's sweet. DIY number seven. So I am starting with this little sign from the Dollar Tree, every moment matters, and it certainly does, and I take that to heart. However, for this project, I am going to be covering that up and painting over it. First, I decided to take out the little hanger, and I'll use that for another project for another day. So I am going to use my Adirondack white chalk paint in a moment, but I actually found my painter's tape, you guys, and so I am going to tape this off. I do like the gold edging on this, and so I wanted to protect it and not get white paint on it. So I went ahead and took care of that, and then I gave it probably three or four coats of my white chalk paint. That was what it took to get that completely covered. So once that was all done and I was satisfied that I couldn't see the image through it any longer, I went ahead and I peeled off all of the painter's tape. That's always super satisfying. And then I set it aside to let it dry the rest of the way. So I am back to my app because I've been playing with the Joy app. And I think I mentioned before, they have all kinds of neat designs that are already created. And so I had found this one called Home Sweet Home. Now this one's a little bit more complicated because it actually is three colors, but I wanted to show it um, because I wanted to make it, first of all. I just thought it was really cool. And then I also figured I'd be able to show you how I lined up um, the three different colors and also how the machine works with this. It's really cool. So I went to go ahead and tell it to cut. And I'm going to show you here on the app. So it shows you exactly what it's going to cut with each color and it's just going to do it in three different sets. Isn't that smart? I just thought that was so neat. So here I've got my little joy. I've just plugged it in. I am going to put my vinyl on my, I'm using the mat this time because I am using a regular vinyl and then I'll be using some smart vinyl and I had to tell it to use the mat for the regular vinyl. So that's what I ended up using for all three. 
I'm not going to go through all of this with you guys because I've already shown you how the machine works in this regard. But um, I used blue for the one piece, which is one of the homes with the whole stars. And then sweet was cut out in silver. And then the other home was cut out in red. I believe that was the order. Hopefully my memory is serving me correctly. So I got it all weeded and here I am trying to put it together. So I essentially looked back on the app to inform my memory and how it needed to go together because I did not use registration marks for this. I don't know if you can use registration marks with the Joy. That's something I've got to learn. Um, I haven't had enough time to, to play with it um, to figure that part out, but this was just as easy for me. So if you just follow the picture, you can absolutely piece it back together. So I'm using the backing of the transfer tape because when I go to add the other pieces of this, I don't want my vinyl that's already on the transfer tape to end up sticking to my work surface, right? So I want to make sure that I've got something under it that is going to um, not stick to the vinyl or not allow the vinyl to stick to it. And everything was curling up on me here, so I just taped everything down strategically in places where it wasn't going to get in the way. If I had to do it again, I would have taped it underneath so that the tape wouldn't have had any risk of getting in the way of my vinyl. So do as I say, not as I do. If you're going to do this, you know, circle your tape and, and stick it underneath, almost like a double-sided tape so that it's nowhere near your vinyl. All right, just a word, a word to the wise, because um, I almost had a mishap with it. I, I got lucky and I was able to salvage it, but um, yeah. So I went ahead and peeled up the second one, and then I did the same thing with that third piece and just made sure that I was getting it where it was supposed to sit within the design. And if it's not 100% perfect, it's fine. You know, it's still going to look super cute. Once I had it ready to go, I went ahead and I lined it up, made sure that it was um, all centered, went ahead and burnished it, and now I'm peeling away the transfer tape. And look at this. I love this so much, and it was so easy to do. Love, love, love. DIY number eight. For this project, I have a Dollar Tree candle holder, I have a leftover Dollar Tree sock from another project, and I have this scrap piece of fabric that I am using. I am cutting it into kind of a quasi large triangle. I had folded it in half there, and now I'm just going to tuck my candle holder into the sock, get that all folded over the rim, and I'm gonna check and make sure that my fabric is going to go around the um, top there. So I am taking out my fabric paint by Arteza and I'm using my little fan brush and doing a little bit of a dry brush technique with this Egyptian blue color and I am just sweeping it across my white fabric. I just wanted there to be some blue and I didn't have any blue fabric and I figured that this was a good way to add a little bit of a funky kind of pattern to my fabric but you have to let me know what you think. Um, and let me know what you're thinking about this new camera angle that I am trying out rather than coming in over top but um, I am now using my heat gun to not only dry the paint but I also figured it would help to set it so I went ahead and used that it dried really pretty quickly and now I'm going to go ahead and create a seam using my hot glue so it's turned inside out and once that was done, I flipped it the other way, like I opened it up and flipped it, and I'm just cutting it so that I've got a little bit more of a cone shape, so that the bottom is all kind of nicely um, curved and even around the bottom. Going to fold up that little bottom part and create a seam. I burned myself real bad with the hot glue here, you guys, so just be careful with hot glue, and there, I've got my figure protector now. A little better late than ever, right? I guess, maybe. <laughs> 
<laughs> turning it right side out and you can see I'm leaving it kind of folded up there again I'm gonna test this out real quick on my little candle holder um, bringing a rubber band down over it I'm gonna make sure I catch the lip of the candle holder that I can still feel through the sock and then I'm gonna fold down the fabric over it so it creates kind of a little bit of a, a brim if you will for the hat that we're creating so then I thought I was going to use this macrame cord and so you can see me gathering it all up and trying to get it to about the length that I want and I decided you know what it's too cream colored it's too yellow I want something brighter white so I went back to my stash and I've got remnants of a Dollar Tree mop head that I'd used for another project a while back I think it actually was a gnome um, and so yes we are creating a, another gnome I hadn't done one in a while and I thought that uh, I had a, a cute idea for this one so I'm going with it but gathering all of my mop head um, strands and as you can see I'm folding them all in thirds and then just draping them into the candle holder. I'm going to pull the fabric hat back down over all of that and then I'm going to make sure I bring the rubber band down all the way to catch that lip on the candle holder again. So hopefully you're understanding what I'm saying but that lip is going to help to keep it from sliding up and off of the candle holder because there's like an edge to it. Folding down the little hat brim and now I'm going to trim off, actually I'm cutting the loops, and then I'm going to go ahead and trim all of the mop strands to get it to um, a better length for our little gnome. And now I'm going to go in and unravel all of those strands, helping his hair or beard, whatever you want to call it, um, to uh, be nice and fluffy and full. So now I went into my stash and I grabbed um, a few of these wooden beads and this is what I'm going to use for his nose and then also for his little hands. So just added some hot glue in there and I'm tucking his nose up under his hat brim. And now I went to my stash and grabbed out these picks that I have had for a while from the Hobby Lobby and they just made me think of sparklers. So I thought, you know what? I can have my little gnome be celebrating 4th of July and give him some sparklers. And I was afraid that they were gonna be too thick for the wooden bead holes, but they were actually perfect. They went right in and they were nice and snug and so my little gnome was going to be able to hold them without a problem. I was prepared to have to drill the holes bigger but it wasn't necessary at all. So just using some hot glue to attach his little hands to the sides of his body, holding his little sparklers and then adjusting his hair to kind of go around his arms there a little bit. And he is all done. Let me know what you think. I love him so much. DIY number nine. For this project, I am using one of these little mini palettes from the Dollar Tree, and this is just a concoction. It's watered-down paint that I've had for some time. I had made it, mixed it a while back, and I just pull it out and use it when I need to. Um, the reason I'm doing this is to help make this little palette look old and worn as if it's been outside. And the thought here, this was um, Rich's idea, my fiance Rich, um, had said, you know, you know all those palettes that people put out in their yard? and they have painted American flags on them. Maybe you can make a mini one of those. So I loved that idea and that's what we are doing. So I wanted it to look old and weathered and now I'm coming in with my Ocean by Waverly. And again, I am not taping this off. I'm just doing it by hand. It doesn't need to be perfect because I actually want it to look rustic and like it's been outdoors. So went ahead and did my little rectangle in the top left corner and now I'm going to come in and start with my stripes. Now when I started doing this I realized I probably should do my white stripes first because it would be easier to come over white with red rather than trying to come over red with white <laughs> because they're all going to kind of blend together here a little bit. So I'm coming in with my white stripes now and getting those done and then I will come back in with the red. Now if you've been watching me you know that I recently did a little flag that I had painted it was like a faux 
stack of books and I painted a flag on the top of them and I had too few stripes and too many states like too many stars <laughs> so I was determined to get this one right so I'm just taking my time and figuring it out because I know that I need six white stripes and I need seven red stripes so that's what I did here and obviously there's a lot more white filling things in right here but um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get it taken care of with the red so and it actually it all worked out perfectly so coming back in with my red and getting all of that situated if you're enjoying this video I hope you'll give me a big thumbs up and please be sure to comment because it really does help YouTube to recognize my channel and help me to grow and be sure to keep watching because I do have that announcement I'm gonna be making in a little bit you are not gonna to want to miss out I am so excited about what I'm gonna be doing you are going to love it so coming in with all of my states now and give it a little help with my heat gun to dry it and now I'm just using my sanding block to give it a quick little sand and there we have it it's all done I think this is so sweet DIY number 10 so I have these stickers from when my son first went into the Marines and they've been sitting in my stash. I hadn't really known what to do with them. And then I've got from the wood pile, I think these were $2.99 for two from Hobby Lobby. So I've pulled one of those out. I got it prepped and I am just going to give it a good coat of my Adirondack white chalk paint by Home Decor. And I'm going to coat all sides of this. Once it was all dry, I'm literally just going to take my sticker, I'm just using one of them, and I'm going to apply it, I'm centering it in the middle of my round, and then I'm just going to burnish it gently with my little Cricut tool here. This is such an easy project. If you all know somebody who um, has a family member in the military, this is something you could easily do. And you know, this is just an idea for inspiration also, right? So you could put anything on these rounds. They're fantastic. So now I'm coming in with some brushed metal gold paint and just gonna give it a nice trim. I just thought it would set it off nicely since there's gold in the sticker design. So I am just finishing this up with the gold trim and then that is going to be it. Such an easy and sweet project and this really has a special place in my heart um, because my son is a member of the Marines and yeah, super proud. So let me know what you think. And apparently I'm gonna show you a whole lot more of this trimming, so thank you for your patience. <laughs> there we go. DIY number 11. Okay, so today we are going to need um, a few items, including the uh, everything you see here. So I have a vase from the Dollar Tree, as well as skewers also from the Dollar Tree. We're going to be needing about 10 of these. I also have a pack of 10 paint sticks. I think I picked those up from Lowe's or Home Depot and I believe they're about 98 cents. A couple of rubber bands, those are gonna be really important later. Um, you're gonna want Gorilla Glue or E6000 as well as some glue gun. And then chalk paint in red and white. And then also some blue ribbon and what I have is like a denim here. It's kind of fun. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is taking my skewers and measuring them up alongside the stir sticks. Um, 
I think you can see that when I started cutting them, the little tips went flying everywhere. So I've got to cut them into my vase so that they uh, don't end up all over the floor because we actually will need the other piece that's being cut off right there. We're going to be needing two pieces out of each of the skewers. So a long piece that will fit the length of the stirrer up until that little groove that happens. And then we're also going to need the shorter piece that will match up with the top. So I'm showing you here how we'll trim that down so that it will match up with the length of the top above that groove and then we'll be leaving the groove space empty. Hopefully that makes sense. I think you'll understand a little bit better as we go. I do have to say that I was having some technology challenges. So um, twice I have done this project and twice <clears throat> my video has for one reason or another stopped working. Um, so I actually ended up having to bring the two projects together into one to be able to show you exactly what it was that I did. But it actually worked out well because I had decided that I was going to do this vase um, again for Heidi's challenge. I'm really excited about this. Uh, as I mentioned, this is my very first YouTube video and I'm really excited to be part of Heidi's challenge. And it's uh, the 11th hour in trying to get this done, but I am determined. So again remember please to share my video and subscribe and please throw some support my way because i could use all the well wishes uh, that are out there at the moment just uh, trying to get this off the ground so i appreciate your support so now i'm going to be painting half of these you'll see i split them in half i've got um <clears throat> five of the stir sticks that i'm going to be painting white as well as five of the cut down skewers and then the other five the set of the little skewers the big skewers and the paint sticks i'm going to be painting red Okay, so as I mentioned, I had lost some of my video. So this is where I am showing you exactly what it is that I did in the video that was lost. So essentially you're gonna put one of your rubber bands around the bottom of the vase, and then we're gonna slip the paint sticks into the rubber band and the rubber band is really going to serve as an extra set of hands really so it's going to be holding all of those paint sticks in so we're essentially going to line the vase with paint sticks and i don't have a full 10 here to show you again <clears throat> but i think you'll get the idea and now I did go back and paint the other sides of my paint sticks so I've got both sides are coated but for the purpose of this little piece of the video I'm just showing you with some extras so once you have them all lined up around the vase you're going to add in your skewers <clears throat> so obviously these are not cut down we would have cut them down and they would have been the proper length to do the project as I've previously described and you'll be seeing in a little bit what it'll look like. So I am adding a second rubber band to help secure the skewers and you're going to want to do that because if you don't you're going to find that it's not tight enough um, all the way up and down and those little skewers are going to end up wanting to slip behind the paint sticks. So it's uh, just a way to help keep yourself sane. So again these are obviously not cut down we would normally have a little break where those little holes are that are created between the the paint sticks from where it kind of 
goes in. Um, so it would pretty much leave like a little oval gap. So right there, we would have a hole and the paint stick would be um, lined with the skewer above and below. So, but without that little pointy end. Hopefully that makes sense and I'll be able to show you a little bit better in a minute. So then what I did was once I had them all around and secured, I pushed the vase down towards the top and this is so that we can glue it. Um, I just thought this was going to be the easiest way for me to get it done <clears throat> and it worked out really well. So I recommend taking your E6000 or your Gorilla Glue and starting with that closest to the bottom of the vase. You're going to just put a bead of glue and then also the hot glue just to give it a quick hold um, and that one closer to the bottom and just slide it right back down and then you're going to want to hug it all around the glass vase. Um, again, remember this is going to go all the way around. <clears throat> And then I went back in at the top and tried as best as I could to get it um, another bead of glue in there to just help secure the top of it. And then your little short piece or the pieces, you're going to go around the top like I'm showing you here. Obviously that would be cut off, but you just tuck it in there and then glue it from behind. I'm showing from the front, but I realized, and I was like, oh yeah, gotta do it from behind, um, just to secure that in there. And then you can see you would have just that cute little keyhole, for lack of a better term, in between. So here is that other project. This is the original project that I had done, and this is, it actually is a blue color. It's called Crystal, I believe, and it's a very, very light, crisp, beachy kind of blue chalk paint, but you can see how I have uh, the little holes that are gathered around and then for this one I used a white ribbon. This ribbon was an inch and a half and it was actually much easier to work with than was the ribbon that I used for the red white and blue project um, which was a two and a half inch ribbon. Um, that denim ribbon uh, for me it was well worth it in the end because I think it turned out adorable. Um, but it just it did take a little bit more of effort to weave it through but you can see here how it's getting woven through you want to start from the outside and work your way in for that first um, effort if you will because that way when you cut your ribbon when you're done you'll have a tail that you can use to make your bow and because of the number of sticks that we're using here we're actually going to end up with the exact number that we'll need in order to have that ribbon come out um, right next to the other one <clears throat> so that we can tie our bow around that one last paint stirrer There it is. Isn't it cute? I think it turned out really well. So now I am just using a bunch of florals from my stash. I had gone through a phase where I was doing tons and tons of wreaths. I was doing floral wreaths, the grapevine wreaths, and then I also was doing others. But anyway, here is the red, white, and blue one. Uh, now that you can see that it's all put together the way that I did the last one. So I'm really sorry that I lost all of that footage, um, but I at least got to show you how I did it. Um, this one is just obviously the red and white stripes along with um, the blue denim ribbon. And I'm just showing you that I went back in and reinforced the bottom a little bit more afterwards with some extra 
uh, glue, the gor Gorilla Glue, as well as a little bit more hot glue, just for some extra stability. So now I'm gonna use a bunch of fun things. I think these are so cute. They're from Hobby Lobby. Um, I always get everything at a discount, but I thought that they looked like little sparklers, even though that they were from Christmas time. But then I'm also gonna use some white and blue flowers, a couple of different kinds of those. Um, I have some other really pretty dark blue flowers that I'm putting in there now. And then there were these really fun, I don't know if they're called gumdrops, but um, they're just these little pom-pom ball type flower things that I thought were super cute. So I'm going to go ahead and finish putting all my florals and fun things in here. And I'm sorry that it's so close to the camera. I'm still working out my setup and trying to figure out how to get everything in frame, especially when it's something tall. So I appreciate your patience with me and you'll get to see the full completed project in just a minute. And here it is, actually both of them side by side, but this is the one for the challenge. I think it came out really, really well. I'm really pleased with it. Um, so you can see the denim ribbon. It's a little bit frayed on the edge, so it's a little bit rustic. I did only give the paint sticks one coat of paint each for the white and the red. So it's hard to see in the video, but up close you can tell that um, it's definitely got that wood undertone to it, which I think is really kind of fun. And here we are with the final reveal.
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. If you enjoy the projects, please give me a big thumbs up and leave a comment and let me know which project was your favorite because it really does help support my channel and helps me to grow because it helps YouTube recognize me. So until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.